It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. And it is Tech Talk. I'm Rob Bro. He's Mike Gustafson inside uh, the First United Bank studio. Clint Scott out this week, so it'll be me and Gus taking you all the way through. It's October, which means it's the best sports month of the year. Vacationing in the Hamptons in is the Mr. Hamptons. Scott. Yes, hanging out with the Kardashians. All those rich people over there. Yes. Maybe Dave Portnoy. Portnoy. Whoever else is up there in the Hamptons. Yep. Is that where you go in the summer? A lot of rich Brennan? kid stuff. No, I was planning on going to uh, Waco Estates. Okay. He goes to Post. Well, that's pretty good. He goes to Post for his summer. I mean, that's the Hamptons of West Us- Texas. Usually what he'll say to us is, I'm going to summer in the in Post. He uses that like the verb. Yep. I'm going to summer. Well, I've been in summered post. in Post in a while. It's more like ropes now. So. Oh, he's going to, I'm going to summer in ropes. We're going to summer in the ropes now. Big time. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> just, no, all not twist the in ropes, there? just ropes. You can call in Visual Edge IT Hotline 806-771-0973 or hit us up in the 8th Flooring Center chat line. Texas Tech is 5-1 and one through six games heading into a bye. It's the perfect bye for a football team right in the middle of your schedule. 3-0 uh, and oh in Big 12 play. The only team in the country with four wins over teams with winning records, Gus. I saw that. How unranked. That? Unranked. Keep us keep us hungry. Seven votes in the poll. One of them was the Arizona guy who ranked you 22nd. First half, incredible. Not perfect, but 18-3 to 3 I'd take any day of the week, especially when you score within two minutes of the first half ending. Get the ball back. Throw it downfield. Get a field goal. Good clock management there at the end. Third quarter. Not as much. Not as much at all. Fourth quarter, you pick it back up. You win the game. I've talked about on these airwaves on T973.com about uh, this team being tough at home and the opposite on the road. You've overcome adversity at home. You have not overcome adversity on the road until this weekend. Broad thoughts on the game, Gus, as we yeah. kind of get into it today. Awesome. Uh yeah, we get the ball back with 24 seconds in the first half, and I'm thinking, all right, take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. And then we throw a little screen and get a holding penalty. All right, now I'll take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. Or look that safety off and throw the deep ball and throw it down there so far that if if it gets picked, they've got, you know, it's, it's essentially a punt, and we're going to throw it into single coverage, and Douglas is going to beat their guy, Mr. NFL Corner, right? And – uh and then it's like, okay, well, let's run another play and get a field goal here. And that's exactly what we did. And uh, at that point, I was all in. There was no you – know, because I had talked about, well, you know, I should DVR the second half, go to bed. At that point, I was like, hell no, I'm in. We're, I'm in. We're locked in, boys. And at the end of the third with 14 plays and 17 well, yards, you're thinking, I should have gone to I bed. I know. <laughs> I know. That, that really was because we, we, had, we had been in an establishment and – and came home at halftime, which that was also the plan. So, like, oh, I, I don't regret that. I think that place was closing anyway. I didn't, it's not like, well, you know, right. you were you were sitting here yeah, when we were doing home, good. You can't stand here. Yeah. yeah, and then we're sitting over here, like, no, it has nothing to do with it. But yes, I changed everything between the second and third quarters. But yeah, so that had to just toss the superstition out and get get uh, get back to get back to work cheering for the team. But yeah, me and a buddy. Back to the house, did the third and fourth quarter. Third quarter was really a just about a full-on disaster, especially when you go back. I mean, you go back and look at the drive charts, and they scored on four straight possessions. And we had – I mean, and you can't you, – the, the, the run the damn ball crowd can't complain too much there because it's like, well, our best player fumbled twice, so there was no – the pitch wasn't good or whatever. And I think that was the first play of the fourth quarter, right? It was third and two. Like, all right, we got us to say something. They run that cool little option pitch. Taj for eight yards or whatever, and he fumbles. I'm thinking, my goodness, we're, we're – we are thumbing our nose at the football gods. But ended up uh, taking care of business. And, you know, I was thinking about this. When, when Beard was here, 
18, 19, we start playing better basketball. The phrase started getting used around here, just in these parts, not necessarily the state station, although the station was using it. The, the phrase rock fight came in, like this basketball game is going to be a rock fight. And, and, and like we as a fan base adopted it, right? I got to go in a rock fight. Yeah, this is going to be a tough game. Yeah. yeah. But there's something about it like we're – I don't know that our fan base – I don't know that we in football are as comfortable winning these rock fights, which is exactly what these last three games have been. Grind them out, find a way to win type deals, you know, and that's just winning football. And, and I mean, I wish that we were beating people 40 to 10. I get it. But we're winning rock fights every week with something different just about every week. I mean, about the only, the only flawless – Group through all of that, as flawless is a strong word, but special teams have been really good throughout the season. But even then, put a punt return on the ground last week. Not a uh, he caught the punt and was fighting for extra yards and right. fumbled. But do you think it was interesting? They told Koy Aiken to just catch the ball yeah, and stay catch there. It in fair catch. Do not yeah. return anything, Koy. Right. Just catch the ball. Right. Trying to yeah. Don't don't do too much. And uh, I mean, you used to see Belichick, Belichick's Patriots do that a lot. They would get to gains, and Danny was part of that as well. If Edelman was down or whatever, like put the backup punt returner in, and you're just there to fair catch it. And last year we saw, we saw Miles Price do that. He he was all he did on the field. I think the only time he touched the field in that game last year versus I was thinking it was a road game, uh, but all he did was didn't play any receiver. Ran out there as a punt returner, fair caught everything, and and called it a day. Yeah, he was dealing with a hip injury right. or whatever and just caught the ball. Yeah. Yep. Fair Didn't catch. Move. Good job. Played whatever, four snaps that day or yeah. whatever. Uh, this from Aaron Dickens after the game. Texas Tech 6-1 in its last seven Big 12 games. Scoring differential, minus 22. Golly, that's living now that's on the getting edge, beat man. by 57. Yeah, the Texas game is The Texas that. game. Yeah. So you can take that one out and say you're 6-0 and with a certain winning percentage, but – it, it's amazing that the Kansas City Chiefs have won two straight Super Bowls, are 4 0, could go to 5 0 today, Monday Night Football. They haven't blown anybody out really in the last two years. Yeah, that's They just true. win. Those rock fights, man. There's and, something to be said yeah. about winning close games. Yeah. Period. I mean, it, you do set yourself up for one of these onside kicks that's going to take a funky hop or something. It'd be nice to beat somebody by two scores, but. I'm not complaining. It's so entertaining. It's so much fun. We'll get the juice after this on Tech Talk. Double T 97.3. The podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Texas Tech winning over the weekend. It's time for the juice. They beat Arizona. 28-22. Uh, for his efforts in the game, uh, Taj Brooks, co-offensive player of the week, along with Arizona State's Cam Scadaboo, who had a big run at the end of that game to set them up for the game winner. Sam Levitt also had four touchdowns in that game. I thought he might have been the co-O-P-O-Y. W, whatever it is. Uh, defensive player of the week, not Jacob Rodriguez, who I thought deserved it, uh, was the highest graded PFF player this week at linebacker. Um, it was AJ Halsey from Houston who put Josh Hoover in a blender all day long. <laughs> it's hard to argue with it. I just no. uh, if you were having us pick right our who we thought would yeah. win it, he certainly was Texas Tech's yeah. defensive player of the yes. week. Yes. Uh, special teams player of the week, Tyler Loop, the kicker for Arizona, five of six from the field goal range. Just an absolute weapon. And then the newcomer of the week is where they have Sam Levitt. Again, four touchdown passes. He's been pretty good. I put him and Retzlaff at BYU and Soresby in the conversation that we were having earlier about Shador and Barron being the best quarterbacks in the Big Twelve. That's probably your top five. And then sheer volume, Josh Hoover and Alan Bowman, but they have a lot of picks, 14 in between them. Uh, Let's see. The Dallas Cowboys won last night, 
20 to 17. Keep me to talk about this game. We will in the next segment. And then in Major League Baseball over the weekend, on Sunday, the Mets beat the Phillies 7 to 6. The Padres beat the Dodgers 10 to 2. On Saturday, all four teams played. Uh, Guardians beat the Tigers 7 to nothing. They are currently in the top of the eighth, two on. Scoreless. Scoreless, and the closer has entered the game, Emmanuel Clause, former Texas Ranger. Heck of a good game. Uh, Mets 6 2 over the Phillies on Saturday. That series tied 1 to 1. The Yankees beat the Royals 6 to 5, game two of that series tonight. And uh, Padres Dodgers in game one, the Dodgers won. So both of those series at 1 to 1. Uh, all right, let's talk a little baseball. Uh, Padres Dodgers last night. Ooh. Jerkson Profar reaches into the. Uh, what is it? The left field seats. Yeah, those are that's the one where the the fence is about waist high, belly yeah. high. Yeah, standing there, he's not jumping or anything. Reaches over. It looks like he caught the ball, but he reacts in a way that deadpans it. Puts his glove down. Glove's kind of loose. Uh, at his side, he's just staring at the fans. Eye contact, staring at the fans. Mookie Betts rounding the bases. He's at third base. The announcers really don't know what's going on, but they finally say, all right, I guess he hit a home run. No reaction out there. Camera cuts off Profar, gets on to Betts. They pop up the graphic, and then the ball starts flying around the infield. And the guy's like, oh, wait, he he caught that and threw it in. He caught it. He caught it and threw it in. Just cold-blooded by Profar. Um, And then later in the game, they're throwing balls at him from the outfield. He's going crazy. Uh, The pitcher for the Dodgers strikes out Manny Machado late in the game and says, sit the blank down, blank and blanker, uh, across the diamond. Uh, Manny Machado is talking to a player in the Dodgers dugout. Dodgers guy says, do you want to meet outside? Manny Machado said, yes, I will meet you outside. And the Dodgers guy goes, uh, 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 well, I, I don't really want to meet outside. You're just reading lips between them. Uh, not the only lip reading fiasco from last night, by the way. We'll talk about the Cowboys lip reading fiasco next segment. Uh, but that's playoff baseball, man. Oh, man. And I know you don't You're always want the drama. Bleep and bleeper. Yes. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> yes. It was sit down, you bleep and bleeper. <laughs> sit, sit, sit the bleep down, you yes, bleep and you bleeper. Bleep and bleeper. Yeah. So I don't know that you always want the drama like that, right? Off the field drama, but the drama of the playoffs was certainly there for Dodgers Padres. Yes, and you talked about that last week. All of these are divisional or historical rivalries. Mets Phillies has been incredible. Yeah, they don't like each other. Dodgers, uh, Dodgers, the Dodgers series <laughs> yeah, has been incredible. They don't like each other. Uh, it's just play, playoff baseball, man. It's, yep. it's and it's not as exciting. No, that's that's the wrong way to say it. It's Need really nice properly. <laughs> it's it's really nice to be able to watch a playoff baseball game without having a heart attack. Yeah, which is when like your Astros, team's in yeah, it. Yeah, like this Astros, time last year. Astros Rangers was also exciting, but like I was dying every pitch. Right, sure. This one's exciting, the same level of exciting. I'm still enjoying it, but in a different way. I right. about nearly died when Jose Altuve hit that three run homer in game five yes. of the ALCS, and I thought well, it's over. Yeah. We are screwed. Right. It's, it's Pack it in. It's, which Go home. Which adds to the ecstasy of it. I mean, when you think about it, that, that all of that stuff takes you to the brink. It's like, I don't, I don't need it to be that exciting to be uh, <laughs> happy, right? But, uh, yeah, that, that was something else because it feels like you're – yeah. But this – yeah, this stuff has been great. Um, I mean, we're sitting here watching a 0-0 game in the eighth. It's – at Cleveland, Cleveland's up 1-0. Detroit's trying to steal a game on the road. Five-game series here. Detroit threw Cy Young. This year's Cy Young winner led the league in wins and strikeouts and all the things. Fantastic performance. Two different times. I think in the fifth and the sixth, they had two on and one out. Got double play balls. One of them with first and second. One of them first and third. He's shushing the crowd. I mean, and and the place is packed and the – little rags and the terrible towel and all that i mean it just looks fantastic and you get that just every game later on tonight we'll have royals and yankees 
they went back and forth. It really wasn't a clean game on Saturday. In fact, it was kind of sloppy, walking in runs and this and that. But evidently, I think I read this right, the first playoff game ever to swap leads five times. I think I read that. Wow. Ever is a long time in baseball. Yeah, there's a lot of now, baseball Now, back in the day, games, yeah, yeah, back in the day, there wasn't a – the World Series was the postseason until 1968, 8, 9. So – most of most of the po- or all of the postseason history was World Series history back then, but still, you get the, you get a sense. And same thing, Kansas City tried to steal a game. So if you're the if you're the if you're Chuck Hines, what are you doing tonight, man? You working the thumb? You just back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Commercial, commercial, boom, boom, boom. Two remotes, two thumbs, big boy. Trying to set up. Working. Yeah. Do you go? I mean, I, I'm an advocate if you've got the big wall on the 80 inch, and this probably wouldn't work in the living room unless you're like a divorce guy or something right. and you can <laughs> college kid or whatever, not married. The uh, Instead of going with the 180 inch, you go 240s. That's my that's my theory. That's my approach to this. But and then you get both. You can get both on. And then See, the only I've manipulation, the, the only yeah. manipulation is sound. We're going to mute this yeah. one. We're going to go sound on, then we can flip it back and forth. See, I've got the 55 yeah. across. And then I'll do a little TV Get tray my, with my laptop yep, right yep. here. So no, I get it. It's that's a forced perspective. Absolutely. So that the screen looks bigger the closer it does to you. Absolutely. Dickens would do that too. He would yeah. set up he would go laptop here and TV. He had a and it, we've all got it figured out. Yeah. It's all our creature comforts. And every once in a while you get the phone in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're really But then when if, you got you gotta get that one right up to you to force the perspective on yeah, the same side. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 definitely the third tier option. Yeah. You're at that point you're just monitoring something over here, right? Yeah. And yeah, then, tonight. And then, you know, you're trying to tweet, and it's, you're clicking yeah. off the game. And yeah, that. that's true. Uh, tonight, we've, we're we just just drinking up the Kansas City. Yeah. Drink all the beers and all the Kansas City. Chuck and Clint, just, just heads on a swivel, right? How many TVs do you think they have in the Hamptons? Surely they got, oh, they got a two. Uh, they're sure. probably an Airbnb in the Hamptons. They got six TVs Surely in there. Surely he's got all, a choice of it. He just snaps his finger and says, bring me a 43 inch And they'd wheel one in, set it up over there, plug it in, connect it to the Wi-Fi. Right? Is there a VCR on that when they roll it in? <laughs> yes, yes. With a Betamax, please. The podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Welcome back to Double T 97.3. On a Monday afternoon, we got the uh, Kansas City Chiefs coming up at 7 o'clock right here on Double T 97.3 after Cowboys Hour. High school fan zone on 100.7 The Score with Coronado and Estacado. Uh, let's see. Uh, off the chat line, how about that Hudson catch? That was a thing of beauty. Yes, sir. It really was because they had, they had tried a, uh, a bubble screen to him earlier and that was sniffed out and blown up. And boy, they, they used a unique look. I don't say unique, but it, it looked like a really good design that that Micah went in motion. It looked like they had some confusion. Arizona did. Boy, he had that good. I mean, he was wide open, yeah. really open. I mean, a little, hot throw was a little high. He did a real good job to come down with it. Fantastic. They've been trying. Aside from last week against Cincinnati, I don't think he played. But you go back to that Arizona State game, they tried him in the red zone mm-hmm. on that thing where he danced around for five seconds and then ran the ball, or at least caught it on the other way. Um, they tried to throw it to him early uh, against Washington State, then connected late. Uh, he had the game in the second half against North Texas, obviously. Um, I, I don't – it's a lot of discourse on Michael Hudson. I don't particularly care to get him involved in the screen game, but I wouldn't mind seeing a couple more downfield targets for him. Sure. If he can get open. Well, that was uh, – yeah, no, I think we had a situation there where it sounds like Douglas is hurting. Um, it, yeah. That's a beat-up beat room. Or Kelly. Kelly, Kelly is Kelly's bona fide hurt. Yeah. It sounds like Douglas is hurting. But it didn't really show. I mean, he, he made all the plays. He yes. was, in some ways, the uh, – a he wasn't the hero, but he was a hero, an offensive well, hero. I don't know. Uh, he was fantastic. Catch at the end of the first half, catch at the end of the yes, second half. You don't I agree. win without those two catches. And both of those are clutch big plays. I mean, because the one is 
the one is like like I said earlier, it's taking a let's get out of here, let's get yeah. to the locker room. Okay, never mind, take a shot. And you know they were playing that one high safety stuff and leaning on their corners, especially that one, number four. Is that right? Number four was there was their NFL guy, yeah. and uh, that I mean that's supposed to be NFL corner. And Douglas beats him for the deep ball that sets up the field goal in the last play of the first half. And then we're down two. And the first thing we do is come out and rip a 30-yarder to him. And, uh, again, Douglas, again, beating single coverage. And, and uh, I, I mean, I guess the – I don't say they're making him pay, but just making plays in single coverage. And that's – Micah's was going to be single coverage – and it ended up being single coverage, but it was it was a bit of a bust because the other dude was just running behind Micah, throw a little bit high. He went up, he climbed the ladder and made a really nice play. But all I'm saying is the the matchup really worked well. And I think maybe with Kelly down, maybe Douglas is hurting. I don't know, depending on the depending on the rumors. But uh there were some reps there for yep. Micah. Yep. And that, that's sort of what we haven't had much of an opportunity for so far is we haven't anybody down in a way that those other dudes are getting on the field a ton because you've got McCray. I mean, Jordan Jordan hadn't touched it lately, it doesn't feel like. some some He's out there for some special teams. But, I mean, it, it's it, it, it's like, if, could we have a couple of these pieces and put them on last year's disaster of an, a receiver room and <laughs> maybe give last year's team a better chance? Uh because this time last year, Micah's getting force fed some reps because he's yeah oh got yeah two ten fingers and ten toes by about this point in the season it felt like I yeah mean, if he comes into last year's roster he's yeah he's getting your reps. second wide receiver maybe your first yes. wide receiver on this yes. on that team and 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 he may not and 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 again I'm not I'm not a you got to get him on the field we got to get the ball from you know hey you know maybe he needs to earn it I don't know. I mean, just because he's, he was a great player in high school doesn't mean we need to shove the ball, for shove the ball his way. But and, and what maybe happened, he has earned it. With, that's exactly with that play. he's making some play. That's exactly it. And and so now now it's like okay, now you're starting to carve out some space in that room. And again, I don't I don't know. I mean, it's the whole way you got to give him a chance. You know what? They practice six days a week, man. I mean, there's yeah. something going on over there. There's a reason why he can't push. Coy Aiken out of the way. Now, some of that's the position he plays. He's playing behind Josh Kelly, and Josh Kelly's been our best receiver this year. I mean, right? And But I loved seeing it, and I was fired up for it and and because I felt like, you know what, this isn't some late-game reps and a blowout, or this isn't some, hey, spin a ball his way and let's go see what happens. This is a legit play when we needed it, and he went and made it, and sure, surely he – he bolstered his own confidence. And again, I don't know the subtleties of a, he didn't grasp the playbook yet, or it's still all new to, I, no idea. Don't care. Uh, I was just fired up to see it happen. And I'm, yeah. you know, hope there's hope, hope it leads to more of the good, more of the same for him. And we can look at this in another six weeks and go, Hey, that's, that's a freshman getting his feet on the ground and taking off. Yeah. The sky's the limit now. Uh, I hope that's what I'm hoping for. I want to shift gears back to the NFL for a second before we get to the Cowboys, which we'll talk about. I want to go to the end of this Houston Texans-Buffalo Bills game. Uh, first of all, Josh Allen was terrible. Josh Allen was 9 of 30, 131 yards, a Oof. touchdown, took a sack. Uh, his quarterback rating was 56. You don't see that very often. You don't see 9 of 30. No. Not not these days because especially there's enough, not from a, an elite quarterback. Right. Yeah, that, that part aside, but back in the old days, there just wasn't enough. Right, there wasn't enough design to create until the West Coast offense came in and were like, no, you need to be completing sixty percent of your passes. Yeah, 50. you're not throwing downfield. Right. When I was game. a kid, it was if a guy's throwing fifty percent of his passes, he's doing something okay. Even even with you know if even if it was a simple check down, it just right. felt like the Bills had. A case of the dropsies, like Oof. they could not. Yeah, there were Sloppy. there were drops. He was yep. throwing it to feet. Yep, it was a bad team effort. You're right. I want to take you to the end of the game. It's. I'll take you to the end game quickly. It's uh, twenty to twenty. After a Bills field goal, they tied it up. Late in the game, the Texans take two and a half minutes off the clock, nearly three minutes punt. 
They punted inside the five. So the Bills, with 30 seconds left in the game, are back inside the five, Gus. What would you do there? Thirty Less than 30 seconds inside your own five. Game is tied. Right. What do you do? Run that clock out. You run the clock. You run two plays. Right. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Punting off the back line. One play, and Fair, field goal, yeah, game Fairburn, over. Fairburn nukes another kick, and here we go. Awful coaching from the Bills. Double yep. 97 3. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97 3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Tech Talk, Double T 97.3, Rob Bro, Dr. Mike Gustafson, Brennan Riker. First United Bank Studio in the Visual Edge IT Hotline. You can call in 806-771-0973. Or hit us up on the 8th Flooring Center chat line. You can find us on the app. Double T 97.3 brought to you by Happy State Bank. Or find us on the interwebs at double dot 97.3.com. Lots of great articles there. Jamie does the... Jamie Lint. Does the good, the bad, and the ugly after every Texas Tech football game. Uh, you got some winners and losers from Jacob Ray coming out. Baron Morton's a winner. Wrote about that this weekend. Um, pretty good record, 12-6. and six, But you start digging into it a little bit. And since he took over last year, Texas Tech's won a lot of games, and it's because he is efficient – uh, looking at his turnover rates and what he's done this year, very low turnover-worthy plays. Him and Shadur are about the same. Uh, somebody on the chat line said, still too many drop passes. Wide receivers coach Juice needs to convince him to look the ball in and then run. You certainly have some of that going on. Uh, Percentage-wise, Baron Morton leads the conference in drop rate. And... He's throwing balls on target. His adjusted completion percentage is third in the Big 12 behind Josh Hoover, who also has a high drop rate, and Shadur Sanders, who has a really low drop rate. Um, But Baron Morton, Sam Levitt, Avery Johnson, and BYU's Retzlaff all have over a 10% drop rate. So you are dropping a lot of balls. You've thrown more passes than those guys. You have 20 drops. Credited, that's per PFF. Um, now, I don't know if they credit, like, Caleb Douglas at the end of the game with a drop. That's fingertips. Yeah. That was, that's tough. That was gonna be a, or if it's, you know, Koy Aiken at the goal yeah. line against Cincinnati in your chest. Right. That, yeah, most certainly. That's a drop. A drop. And he had a drop the other day. He did. Early in the game. He did. Just dumped it. So, uh, you can dig into a whole lot of numbers and come away with... Baron Morton's one of the best, if not the best, quarterback in the Big 12 right now. Love it. And uh, hope that uh, the the record will match, you know, that the record will play out and his stats are really good. Because uh, Shadur's going to get all the all the, the shine. He's the – he's. I mean, first of all, he's a really big brand in the game right now. Um, he's the one throwing Hail Mary touchdowns. He's yep. the one uh, – coming into the season as Big 12 preseason offensive player of the year. So the, he, he's the one that's got expectations heaped on him. We all had expectations and have expectations for Barron. I don't know that it was be the best player in the league expectations or be the best quarterback in the league, but he's a coach's kid, and it feels like, uh, it feels like that's playing out. Hopefully there's six more of those. We are at the halfway point. We are. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Yeah, we can we can reset season and and go through first half and look back back away instead of immediately turning our attention to the next opponent. We can uh, enjoy some open week radio here. Yeah, time, a time for reflection. A time for reflection. <laughs> a time to think about where you are and who you are in life. Here on Double T ninety seven three. I think this knows who depressing. he is. Live with Delilah. We had, uh, where are we here? 
what did you think about the environment in Arizona, at the game in Arizona? Like just the right as the game was getting started, some of the shots that you could see crowd in the background, like yeah. there it feels like there's a lot of empty seats. What I don't know is what is capacity there. So it's a decent capacity. Not um, bigger than ours, right? I think right? not bigger or, than ours. No, no, no. It, it, right around 50, I believe. Okay. It didn't feel full. I think 45? They listed it at 45, 45 attendance. I think they listed it at 40. The, the same has capacity at 50,800 as of 2022. Yep. Pretty much. That's the, and uh, just the. You got to the Google machine quicker than oh, I yeah, did. Nice. He's trying to get in there. The, uh, the yeah. Uh, that's, that's a. It, it just felt like the gaps. And sometimes some stadiums lend themselves to, hey, if we're going to have any empty seats, they're going to be there and there. Yeah. So I, I don't want to speak in knowing generalities, but if if the empty corners in the one little part I saw can be generalized to four corners, to say that place was 90% full feels rich. Did um, they say 45 or was it 40? I thought they announced 45. They might maybe have. not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Even Here's if they the, did. I've got the postseason. Post even if they thing. even if they said 45. Yeah. 45, 7, 73. That's announced right. 45. Right. So they're saying that's roughly 90% full. I had a it buddy there who said yeah. it was 75% okay. full at the so, beginning, but leaked out quickly. So we're talking maybe he, if, if he's closer to being right, yeah, then that's, that's a 35. Yeah, yeah 38. And then we. And then it fades. And it felt like the only time that they were a factor inappropriately was when they got back into that game late third, early fourth, and even then. But by then, as you said, that place had trickled empty. When when the all of the crowd shots are of single single rows, and those are better shots anyway. If there's four people and they're all into the game, those are better. But hardly ever did we get like a full – right full shot of you know a section full of like shakers or anything like that it was like hey every crowd shot involves four people yeah it just made me think that the environment wasn't great and 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 i which that's their business whatever the the thing that i'll go is okay that's two that's two of the pac-12 schools that have you know that everybody was saying they're going to come into this league and go whoa this pac-12 i mean this big 12 these guys are nuts and uh and then we've we've you know been to a couple of them, or we've had one come here and we've gone to one. And we're like, yeah, I get it. And I would tell you that the Arizona schools probably in the old Pac-12 had as much capacity as any non-Oregon schools, maybe Washington, for attendance and yeah. environment and all that. I'd put Arizona like, near the top of that list. I heard people complain about the Utah attendance early on. They were playing an FCS team. Colorado, you cannot complain about what Colorado's doing there. They're, they no, are lit yeah, there in uh, Boulder. Yeah, they're understandably bonkers. But they, the boots on the ground there were saying it was a, a loud stadium just acoustics-wise. Not many people right. there. But it, when it was loud, it got loud. Okay. Um, but there were comments from Arizona fans questioning the validity of the program in general. Should we even keep football? Oh. Because... That was the Big 12 opener at home, and you put out that kind of crowd. On a Saturday night. On a Saturday night. <laughs> Double T97, three more after this. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk podcast from Double T97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Welcome back. It is Double T 97.3. We're going to get to this Dallas Cowboys game. The Dallas Cowboys winning 20-17 to on a game-winning drive. The Dallas Cowboys scored 14 points in the fourth quarter. Then it was a 70-yard game-winning drive from Dak Prescott that sealed the deal. A touchdown pass to Jalen Tolbert where he finally breaks out of the pocket, gets around, and chunks it to Tolbert. I am a Dallas Cowboys fan. Uh, Gus, you're kind of the opposite. Mm -hmm. I think you and I watching the Cowboys probably feel the same amount of hate. (laughs) I have hate watched the Cowboys every game this year. I don't like Mike McCarthy as a play caller. Uh, You know my thoughts on myself being an offensive coordinator. (laughs) I do not agree with Big Ten Rob. Big Ten Rob. Uh, Purdue, Purdue's still looking. Yeah, I want to run the ball more. Uh, I want to make good decisions. I want to move Dak out of the pocket because T.J. Watt. 
and their edge rushers are just murdering your tackles. They ran at one point to Steele's side, who people were mad at Terrence Steele last night because he said his high school in the opening and not Texas Tech. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that because me and my roommate, we're not big <laughs> Terrence Steele fans, and they do the intro. Yeah. And I said, he went to Texas Tech, right? And my roommate said, yeah. And I said, okay, said his interesting. School, yeah. A lot of guys do that. A lot of guys say they're elementaries or whatever else. That did not bother me one bit. I bothered the Facebook crowd. Um, and it might bother the chat line. I, I don't know if I said it and then the people remembered it and want to get mad about it. But that did not bother me. What did bother me was him getting whipped all night in pass pro. <laughs> but it's TJ Watt. Yeah. Everybody gets whipped He's by TJ good. Watt. So yeah. it, that wasn't as frustrating to me. But at one point, Gus, after 16 straight snaps of – T.J. Watt sniffing Dak Prescott. They throw a delayed bubble to Zeke Elliott, and they're trying to do it around T.J. Watt. Oh. It's just like, what are we we doing? Like that Full strategy, Kyle. Let's see how it works out for him. That is not a play that should be in the rotation in that game plan, especially in that flow of the game. You cannot Mm -hmm. call that play. And there just seems to be so much of that. Um, But you did win the game. Dak Prescott throws two interceptions, uh, the second of which is in the end zone or at the goal line to C.D. Lamb. And at the moment in the game, feels like a backbreaker. Dak Prescott goes to the bench, head down, terrible body language from Dak. C.D. comes over and says something. They do not have audio of it, but it's a slow-mo replay of C.D. saying something to Chris Collinsworth, then says... Uh, I'm going to let you guys read your lips there, but that does not look good. And then Tariko triples down on it and says, yeah, that looks terrible. And then they go back to it after the break and are talking about how bad it was that C.D. Lane was saying something to Dak Prescott. The internet sleuths have finally figured out what C.D. Lamb said. Jump ball four. Jump ball, Which I got you. Four is, four is Dak's Dak Prescott. number. Yeah, jersey number. Yeah, He's telling his quarterback to put it up. Put it up, and I'll go get it. In that opportunity, he was trying to zip it in there. His receiver, who trusts him, is saying, hey, man, put that up. I'll jump for it. Make that a jump ball. Now, was it bad body language that Dak Prescott was head down, dejected? Yes. But Dak Prescott, 29-42, 352, two touchdowns, two picks. I mean, that's the Tony Romo stat line. <laughs> Yeah, you can do without the picks, but the, do the, the rest picks. of the numbers look okay. But yeah, it's the, also the a picks are a, a 20, 20 to seventeen game. It's six to three at halftime. They score seven in the third. Take the lead, ten to six. And they score again. And you're having to come back from down. Uh, Justin Fields didn't look good at all. They're running the ball pretty well. They kind of go away from the run. It allows you to get back into the game. Uh, that's Arthur Smith for you there with the Steelers, the offensive coordinator. Um, we also have Rico Dowdle, 20 carries, 87 yards, not a great percentage, but he looked good. You finally might have a running back. Just give it to him more like that. He caught the TD pass too. Caught the touchdown pass. One of them there in the in the end zone, the, the first of the touchdowns in the fourth quarter, which was huge. Uh, and then the last one, Jalen Tolbert. Uh, who is only playing, really, because Brandon Cooks did not play this week. Uh, Overall, though, Dak was bad. The offensive line, bad. The running game, not very good. And you beat a playoff team on the road. That's the kind of win that can start to turn a season. Yeah, especially as they begin this rough part of the schedule you get like five or six tough games in a row you also had lightning delay situation last night and so you're yeah. in the visitor's locker room which i assume isn't as comfortable as a home locker room and uh probably stuffed into a tiny room waiting that thing out right yeah it's probably uh, the heaters on right you got the, or the air conditioner whatever it is walls negative are, for you walls are painted pink yeah. or something <laughs> there was a there was a shot in the rain delay where zeke elliott's putting on his jersey and like throws out his shoulder, putting his arms above his head. You're like this guy needs to 
pack it in, man. Uh, well, team Money like on the chat said, line that... says, Steele was actually protecting Tech's name by not saying it. <laughs> he was wiped all night long. He didn't want that shame coming down on Texas Tech. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I again, it's TJ Watt. A lot of people a lot of people suffer yeah. in TJ Watt's wrath, but yeah. it just feels like TJ or it feels like Terrence Steele has been a much better run blocker in his career than pass blocker. He's not a very good pass protector. And they pass a lot. Uh, and you also have Guyton get hurt in the game and they bring in Three run shot. Two outs in the ninth. Two outs in the ninth. Detroit. 3 0 off Emmanuel Clase. Yes. The best closer in baseball. That dugout, that, the Tigers dugout comes alive in a silent. Yes. Cleveland, Ohio. Ooh. Was that the, uh, the Texan catcher there on base? A bit big. Big Rogers. mustache. That's Kerry Carpenter. Played at Virginia Tech. Oh, that's Kerry Carpenter. Yeah, they oh, hit, he hit it. The they hit it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Klaus, he was a strike away from getting out of that. Sent yeah. it to the bottom of the ninth. Zero, zero. Looked like a little cutter. Boy, Carpenter knew he got it. Final Ooh. thought on the Cowboys. Somebody else asked earlier if the run defense is fixed. I don't know that the Steelers have a very good offense, so I, I'm not sure. This has been the Tech Talk Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.